to welcome you um, to the second evening of the Asian Contemporary Art Week programming here at Sotheby's. This year, uh, we are presenting the seventh edition of the Asian Contemporary Art Week. And um, alongside a, a, a numerous number of um, museum exhibitions um, that are presented uh, throughout the city in um, museums and galleries, uh, we uh, create and organize a central program, a, a picture of what is going on um, in the recent discussions Conversations, the works of the artists. Tonight, it's my uh, pleasure to introduce uh, Buta Sud and Rashid Ram to the uh, dais and uh, conversation. Uh, Pooja is the director of Coach and the editor of this book. And if you haven't had a chance to uh, see it or hold it or look through it, you should uh, try to get a chance to do that uh, this evening. Rashid, I think I'm even blush before when I say he's one of uh, South Asia's foremost contemporary artists working in uh, photography digital imagery, sculpture, and video. What characters in history do you most dislike? Uh, um, I'm actually really grateful to give that one. I, I think we talk about, um, even this context, so Cyril uh, Radcliffe, he's the one who took the Radcliffe line, which separated him and Pakistan. What is your main fault? And they've changed over the years. But I think this, uh, at this stage in one's life, it's a um, victim to trivia. And what is your uh, idea of happiness? Now that's a really good problem. Okay? But um, I don't think it's about a particular moment or a particular series of things that are supposed to make you happy. I think it's really a state of being. Who are your favorite poets? Joseph Boyce and Marcel Krishan. What's your favorite motto? No, we cannot. But if not yourself, who would you be? All the artists would have the same answer. Me. <laughs> um, in 2009, the uh, economists wrote about the validation process for a contemporary artist, and they uh, said validation is not straightforward. Uh, it's complicated. And uh, in a social setting where the official rule is rule breaking, the artist who crawls under the first hurdle knocks over the second and does a strange sort of scissor kick to the third may ultimately win the greatest recognition. And almost by definition, a competent artist is an insignificant one. I think it's true uh, across the region and across the ages. With the difference of degree, of course. It might seem uh, through uh, certain ages, uh, for example, if you look at uh, um, Mughal miniature painting, it might seem that it's more about a certain kind of skill. But even within the, the, that certain framework, Artists have been breaking boundaries. Uh, I think um, today, several of the artists that we know as contemporaries to the night, who started working in the 50s and the 60s. So it does range back to that. I think it's uh, for places like Sotheby's and uh, auction houses and for convenience that we've made this distinction between the moderns, which necessarily begin, say, in 1947 and continue, uh, um, there's a gray zone that overlaps by the 80s. And then you have so-called contemporaries. And so if you look at people who were real iconoclasts like Bhupen Khakkar or Vaidhuri, uh, etc., they were working in the 80s, you know, Vivan Sundra, Nalini Milani, all working very seriously in the 70s, 80s. But uh, if you were to ask me, and if you were to talk about contemporary as we see today, how it's defined today, then I think it is really starting in the mid 80s. Um, Definitely de some defining moments like 1992 when we had very serious political upheavals in India which kind of catapulted a whole host of artists to change their practices. I mean, Vivan Sundra came up with this thing that I stopped painting now. Because we needed to really use another kind of language to talk about stuff that was happening, you know, very strong political things in the I think uh, the, the, these terms need to be revisited from time to time and perhaps if we can uh, break them down into Further term, term knowledge is that would maybe help a better understanding of um, modernism, local modernism, or regional modernism from other places. The current generation, because of uh, lots of different new formats, which totally free you from uh, usual questions that we often associate with these heavy questions of uh, identity and tradition, such as when you're using camera and then video, you suddenly, uh, uh, most immediately, free yourself from. Uh, 
how identity is linked with stylistic conventions. I don't have to necessarily make a video with an ornate border to make it look like from South Asia. <laughs> so, uh, so there are new formats, mediums, uh, modes of communication which, uh, which, which help to break these boundaries. I guess are artists going to continue to move between the gallery and um, the cineplex? Or are we entering a new era of sort of the box office art slash artist? Uh, see, in India, if you want to be mainstream, you've got to be part of the world. I don't think artists as yet have got into that world, except one. There was Hussain, who, uh, you know, who made that fantastic film with Madhuri Dixit called Gajigamini. He was absolutely obsessed by her. It was actually quite a fantastic film. But, and whether it was that uh, Hussein was, a, was a, you know, a household name before or after, I don't know. But certainly, uh, coming into mainstream, which is Bollywood, as you suggested, through film and cineplex, cineplex uh, is going to be a while yet. Uh, I don't see any reason why artists should not get uh, the kind of importance or uh, uh, popularity uh, that stars get, actors get, and, and politicians get. Uh, they, as, they can be as powerful as anybody else. I mean, as an artist, that, that's what I would like to believe.